Welcome to Top 10 Archive. It's a deep desire that most of us don't have the gall to act out on. But revenge, sorry, is a common human temptation festering within all of us. In this installment, we'll look at the 10 cases where someone refused to turn the other cheek. Number 10, Katie's Revenge. Convicted child molester Anthony Stockelman was sentenced to prison for his sexual abuse and murder of young Katie Coleman. Though the family would call for the death penalty, the judicial system found it more fit to lock up the murderer instead. Though unknown to Stockelman, Katie had a cousin incarcerated in the same prison, who would carve the words Katie's revenge into Stockelman's forehead one night as he slept, forever branding him for the atrocities he had performed. Number 9. Reverse Foreclosure when a branch of Bank of America wrongfully foreclosed on the house of Warren and Maureen Yurgish, it left the family dumbfounded. They paid cash for their home and as such had no mortgage for the bank to foreclose on. Several phone calls, letters, and dead-ended attempts to reach the bank later, Warren decided it was time to lawyer up. The foreclosure was dismissed, but Yurgish wanted to get his attorney fees back from the bank. After several attempts to reach the bank again, Yurgish went to court to procure a writ of execution, allowing him to seize bank assets as payment. Showing up with a moving truck and police escorts to take the lobby furniture at the bank, the manager decided to cut a check for $2,500 instead. Number 8. South Korea Blast K-Pop Music at the North When North Korea sank the ROKS Chonan, a South Korean Navy vessel, North Korea figured it would be a good idea to launch an artillery attack against its southern cousins for no reason, resulting in the deaths of four people. South Korea decided to get a little bit of revenge. In June of 2012, South Korean soldiers marched to the border and set up an enormous set of speakers, which they used to pound K-pop into the airwaves. You know what they say, fight fire with K-pop tunes. Number 7. Harold Fisher vs. Guido Rossi First Lieutenant Harold Fisher was returning home from his 20th bombing mission in World War II in his B-17. With the plane in barely working order, he had his men throw out anything that wasn't bolted down in hopes of staying airborne. Thinking the arrival of an American P-38 fighter was a godsend, he couldn't have been further from the truth. The P-38 was, in fact, commandeered by one Guido Rossi, who used this plane to shoot down many other planes. Fisher survived and then went to his commanding officer to ask permission to borrow an experimental YB-40 aircraft, on which he painted the likeness of Rossi's wife. In result, Rossi was reportedly shot down and he was captured. Number 6. Aaron Burr vs. Alexander Hamilton Aaron Burr would continuously attempt to get political office, although Alexander Hamilton seemed to make it his job to prevent that from happening, costing Aaron Burr his presidency against one Thomas Jefferson. It wasn't until Burr was running for governor of New York and Hamilton again shot him down that Burr decided it was his turn to do the shooting. Challenging Hamilton to a traditional gun duel, Burr would emerge the victor and Hamilton was pronounced dead on July 11, 1804. Number 5. Aaron Barr vs. Anonymous The international hacker collective known as Anonymous has been in the headlines of news stories for a while now, and recently, the FBI decided they should finally go after them. Aaron Barr, the once head of internet security firm H.B. Gary, claimed to have information on the heads of Anonymous, including addresses, names, and other personal information. As I'm sure you can guess, this just didn't sit well with the collective of hackers. They took to their keyboards and tore apart H.B. Gary's website as well as Barr's personal social media accounts, leaking some 60,000 emails to a torrent site that contained proprietary information. Casually, Anonymous would respond, It would appear that security experts are not expertly secured. Number 4. Jane White and the Jehovah's Witnesses Oh, a knock on the door. It must be important, right? Well, for one Jane White, that just wasn't the case. She would get the same uninvited knock from Jehovah's Witnesses once a month for 12 years straight. After one too many surprise visits, Jane had enough and decided to get a little payback. She would start pounding on the doors of their church. Once the door was opened, she began to offer everyone inside free magazines. This lasted for roughly 30 minutes before the church called the police and the two parties split ways. In the end, Jane got what she wanted, to sit on her couch without interruptions. Number 3. Maria Akyabrskaya Buys a Tank 
During World War II, Maria Akyabrskaya's husband, an officer in the army, was killed in action. Doing what any grieving widow would do, she sold off all of her belongings to amass the amount required to purchase a tank. Writing a letter to Stalin himself, she asked and was granted to be sent to the front line as the driver of the tank she named Fighting Girlfriend. In her first outing, she outmaneuvered German soldiers, and upon becoming immobilized, she jumped out to repair the damages in the middle of a firefight and successfully continued on. Maria went on to posthumously earn the Hero of the Soviet Union Award, a feat that no other female tanker had done. Number two, Eliahu Itzkovitz. Eliahu Itzkovitz, a Romanian Jew, bore witness to the murder of his entire family at the hands of one man during World War II. Stănescu. Itzkovic vowed to get revenge for the travesty, but was unable to locate him after the war. Later, he learned Stănescu had joined up with a French foreign legion, so Eliahu decided to join up himself. Going AWOL for reasons of revenge, Itzkovic would gain the trust and friendship of Stănescu. Eventually, the two would be separated from their unit, and Itzkovic used this opportunity wisely. We're not sure how the revenge killing went down, but we imagine it looks something like this. Number one, Alan Rolski. You may have heard the name Alan Rolski. He's notorious for an abundant amount of junk emails he spread worldwide. In 2002, the world had its chance for revenge after Rolski's interview with the Detroit News was posted to Slashdot. Included the address of his new house. People took to the internet and signed him up for a gratuitous amount of free advertising mailings, stating, They've signed me up for every advertising campaign and mailing list there is. These people are out of their minds. They're harassing me. Rolski had many interviews and even claimed he did nothing illegal, that he was nothing more than a legitimate businessman. In the end, he was convicted in June of 2009 to a little over four years of prison time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to visit and sign up with our friends at Geek Fuel by using our affiliate link found in the description section. For just $20 a month, you'll receive at least $50 worth of geeky stuff that you'll actually use. Each box comes with a t-shirt you'll actually want to wear and a free Steam game download, usually valued at $10 or more. Don't miss out on this monthly box that Stan Lee himself endorses. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to keep updated on more lists like these, box opening, and giveaways. Especially like the one about Jehovah's Witnesses. We ought to send Maria over to knock on their door with a tank.